Welcome, everybody. This is uh, Coach Ross with Coach Ross Football. This is the uh, second episode in this little series I tried to start up here called Coach Talk. Basically, this is meant to uh, to bring in coaches that uh, that have um, film that they want to share that uh, that you know kind of want to help other coaches, young coaches, and talk about uh, uh, some of their drives, what their thought processes were. Um, some of the about their offense and about how they're uh, going about their play calling and their game plan. And so um, this is obviously meant to to help out younger coaches, and newer coaches who are just getting into that role of of either being the play caller or the head coach. And uh, it can be a very intimidating role uh, to be in. So this is all geared towards helping you out. And we obviously encourage uh, anybody here to join in and watch and ask questions and feel free to join into the conversation. And if there's any coaches out there that are seeing this neither now or later on, um, feel free to hit me up later on. Um, and um, I'll be happy to get you on here talking about your own uh, film that you want to share with everybody else. Because again, this is, this community is all about, you know, developing us as coaches so that we can then develop a, uh, our players and our teams to uh, set them up best for success. So tonight I am joined by Randy Baskin. He is uh, now what the first year head coach, correct coach? Yes, At, sir. Uh, Chowin Middle School in Tyner, North Carolina. So thanks for coming on coach. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. Good, good. Hopefully I can get up so, here and give some, some stuff and sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself a little bit so that uh, people that are watching and people watch it later on will uh, know a little bit about you. Well, my name is Randy Baskin. Um, I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, currently residing in Hertford, North Carolina. Um, played football my entire life uh, from Little League on up. So un f understanding football wasn't just neither here nor there it's the only sport i ever love and my wife will tell you she can't stand it because it's all i look at <laughs> um i have been wanting to get into coaching for a while man but you know i, I drive 18 wheelers on top of well i own my business now but at the time i was working for a company so i didn't have the time to dedicate to go out because i was actually supposed to go out and coach at my old high school and like I said, I'm driving 18 wheelers. I'm gone during the week. So it wasn't really going to work if I'm there only on Fridays. But, I mean, I, I love football, man. It's, it's, it's done a lot for me over the years. And uh, it's something that I take real serious. Well, good, good. Um, and I understand that you were just uh, made the – or given the option – or not the option, but the uh, – awarded the position of the head coach starting uh starting next year correct yes sir yeah last yeah. season was my very first season coaching ever and i took over in the oc role and some things happened and i got a, i got the job as the head coach which came as a surprise to me when i went to turn in my paperwork the woman at central office told me they have been wanting me to take over since last the season that I'm the OC, so it was kind of a surprise. Well, good. Um, so you kind of follow the uh, the same path I did. I mean, I, I coached at my, my at the middle school that I was at um, since uh, since 2006, but then I was running the defense and. Um, um, and then all of a sudden my coach kind of told me, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm stepping away from football. The, uh, the team is yours. So, um, all of a sudden own, oh, you know, eyes, I, you know, deer in the headlight kind of thing. Like, Oh no, man, now that, now the team's mine, now my responsibility has gone up. And now all of a sudden the pressure's gone up and, and then added, add on to that, the fact that you have other responsibilities with not only building a coaching staff, but now you're making all the decisions as opposed to maybe just calling the offense or defense. So now, now it's even that much more intimidating. So I can I can totally uh, feel where you're coming from because I've been in that situation, and you know it's definitely a learning process. So um, you're on here to kind of share your experience and share your your story, and uh, in hopes that uh, it, it it touches some other coaches and say, you know what, he was in the same position I am right now, so I can learn a lot from this guy. So that's you know one of the main reasons we're having this. Maybe one of the main reasons that I'm that I'm having you on here. So um, I understand that you brought some film that you're going to want to talk about. So why don't you, why don't you kind of lead us into that and then we'll, we'll get it rolling here. 
Well, I'm glad you brought up staff because that's kind of where <laughs> where I am now. You know, I'm I don't know anybody out here, so it's kind of loud. And all of my friends they either stay too far or you know it's whatever. So as of right now, it's just me and another guy who was uh, who ended up coming in middle of the season last year was one of the players' parents, but. Yeah. I wanted the opportunity to get up here, man, to speak because I'm pretty sure there's somebody else that's out there like me um, mm -hmm. waiting to get your shot. And now Absolutely. you get your shot and now you're to the wolves. You know, it ain't no I'm just a linebacker coach. Oh, that's not my problem. I'm just you're the you're the guy that has to, you know, to get them the motor running to score points. You know, there's always that that statement defense win championships but offense win games so first thing i could tell somebody man is don't panic yeah i i oh, honestly man i was in panic mode and it was just oh man what am i gonna do what am i gonna run you know i had partial playbooks that i had sat around and made but it was just from doodling plays that I had ran before while playing or just seeing random plays I like on TV. But that's the first thing I can tell you is, is, is don't panic. On top of that, the next thing I would tell you is to learn, learn the program as to where you're going and learn the opponents you're going to play and get as much film on that as possible. Um, we weren't allowed, we are not, not allowed, we wasn't given any film. We mm -hmm. went into every game blind. I didn't know what they were running offensively, defensively, but yet by middle of the season, their coaches were calling out all of our plays before we could run them. <laughs> so another tip for that, man, I, I studied YouTube. I watched um, mm -hmm. highlight tapes. Another tip, if you can't find anything on the middle school, go look at the high school film. If mm -hmm. the That's a tip. If the coach hasn't coaching hasn't been if the head coach hasn't made a change in the cup past couple of years, more than likely, you know, they're going to want the middle school to run what they're running or something like it. Go look mm -hmm. at the high school field, you know, get a feel. Yeah. Um, after you do that, man, learn your players. One thing that I got a, ch a lucky chance to do, we had summer workouts. I don't know how that works for everybody else. And I got to meet a lot of the guys up front. And we could talk, we could, I could see what they can do, what they couldn't do, what their strengths were. And I really got to talk to them. And, and at that point, you got to get them to buy in to what you're selling. You know, it's like yeah, selling a car. I, I, if they, if they ain't into it, then, you know, you're going to lose a kid. And once mm -hmm. you lose a kid, you know, he, he's, he's gone. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, another thing that I found that a lot of my players respected me for you got to break them the truth early. Yeah, you was a running back in rec ball, but that's because you were the biggest kid on the field and couldn't nobody tackle you. So you ain't going to be no running back here. You're probably going to be a lineman here. Uh, you know you can't catch the ball. So I ain't telling you that you can't get better at it, but, hey, let's try this first. Actually, you know, you brought up some really good points that I wanted to touch up on there. Um, go back to the, the staff. Are they – putting any kind of requirements that you have to hire like um or that you can choose who you want you have to you know go uh -huh. take some take some teachers from because i'm i'm in kind of a, a situation where to give you an example you know typically we like to hire um the coaching staff from the teachers the faculty that we have at the school however i've reached out i, I still need one more coach for this coming season we start in february just like you um and um i've reached out to every single teacher that potentially could be interested in coaching and none of them want to. So I've had to actually go outside of school and bring in one of my buddies to, uh, to coach. So are they kind of putting any kind of restrictions on you? Or are you kind of open to, uh, to put, you know, whatever kind of coaches you want in place? Uh, it's, it's honestly the same kind of situation with you. I, again, I don't know anybody out here. Mm -hmm. All of my friends are four hours to back the other way. So, but I have the option to bring in who I want to, you know, it just got a matter of getting the paperwork and all of that in. But, you know, as far as teachers goes, you know, they have a hard time hiring football coaches at this school from what I understand. So, you know, okay. if, you know, if I, for whatever reason, decided to go somewhere, it's up in the wind at who they can get to replace me. And, you know, it was at the point 
where, you know, when I was coaching, uh, my friend was the head coach last year. It was almost at the point where the athletic director was going to have to be the football coach, and he's the baseball coach. Uh-huh. So it's, it's – I mean, I, it has its ups and downs, man, but I, I'm forever grateful for it because they gave me my foot in the door. Yeah. And there's, there's a couple other points I wanted to, that you that you brought up that I wanted to touch on. Um, you you spoke of, um, you know, kind of getting to know your opponents, which I'm, I'm all for. However, like for us, um, we're not allowed to say, go film the other team. Now, that's not to say that schools around here don't do that, um, but it's an unwritten rule that we're not allowed to do that. Um, so obviously it's it's all about kind of talking to other coaches and say hey you know you you, you played this this squad uh a cool, couple weeks ago tell us what they did and it's basically that or go and actually scout them on your bye week so and like you said you brought up a good point YouTube and then scour the internet for for highlight videos and you brought up a, brought up a real good point about talking to or looking at other you know whether the high school that they feed into run because typically you're right that um most high schools look to the middle schools that, that feed into them to, uh, to run their thing. So I'm in the same boat there with you. It's, it's a, a lot of times it's when we are facing that opponent. Yeah. We're trying to get as much information as we can. So we're talking to other coaches um, and trying to prepare and game plan for that team based on what that coach is telling. And who knows if that coach is even telling us the right thing too. So we're kind of basing it off that. So uh, I'm pretty jealous of some of these other coaches that I've heard. Yeah, we, you know, we we all exchange film and everything like that. I wish we had that. I wish we had that opportunity because, I mean, it, 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 it's it's free to all all schools. So you know, everyone's on an even playing field here. So, you know, some schools typically might not play by the rules, and um, it's unfortunate that you have some like that because you know, like you've said, you know, we we've last year we've gone into a, a school that we consider one of our biggest rivals, and it was amazing. I, I would call out a play because we got, we go a little bit of no huddle and I would run a play and it had a motion, a jet motion mixed in with it. And then all of a sudden the coach is saying, you know, now, now they're running this next play next. You just watch. And it's because he, he had film on me that he wasn't supposed to have. Hey man, so, that, that exact same boat, man. Like I said, yeah. we get to our tougher opponents and I signal a play and he's yelling out. It's coming this way. It's coming this way. Yeah. Like, well, how do you know that? I am. So it's, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. like I said, a lot of these people around here, I mean, these are small towns. These, mm -hmm. And these guys know each other year in, year out. And, and that's how it is. If, if I beat you 44 to nothing, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're going to be, you got film, you're going to be giving it to your buddy and hope he can beat me. So, right. And then the, um, the other point you talked about getting to know your players, you know, and you brought up the, the rec ball thing too. Um, it is amazing when I, because we have to have tryouts. We have about five days of tryouts for our school and it's amazing. He, you, you see the kids and you can already almost pick them out of, out, out of a crowd that are the, the rec heroes, the rec football heroes. And, and then all of a sudden they get the school ball where, because I don't know about the rec, rec leagues where you are, but with, with us, there's, um, there's weight limits, you know, they, they break water. down. Yeah, there's, there's weight limits. So they have to follow. So now all of a sudden you know, they get the school ball. There's no weight limits, and everyone is on an you know, even playing field there. And then all of a sudden, someone's bigger, faster, stronger, and they don't know what to do. And so, but they still have their heart set of playing wide receiver, playing quarterback, or playing running back. And see, what I tell them is, you can try out for whatever you want, but I can tell you right now that I'm not keeping eight running backs. I'm not keeping nine nine quarterbacks. I'm going to keep my three or four running backs, my three or four quarterbacks, and. You know, your best chance at making this team might be at guard or at center, you know, especially when we run a uh, – we run out everything out of the shotgun. One of my most important positions is a center. If you can snap a shotgun snap, you are absolutely vital, vital in my offense. So I try and tell them, hey, you know, you may have been a running back in, uh, in rec ball, but in school ball you might be a guard, you might be a center, you might be a tackle. So I have – me, myself, I have my – for me – and my guy, my returning guys know this. I am firm when I say I could care less what you did in rec ball and mm -hmm. I could care less of what you did last year because I have, and it's something I will touch on a little later. Um, I'm all about preparing these guys at the middle school for the next level. Right. Because that's essentially in my book what football should be. But yeah. guys get so caught up in winning that mm -hmm. it doesn't become that. 
Right. So, and that's my thing, man. I, I care more about my guy's future than I do about winning football games. Mm-hmm. And I've had people look at me, sound like, well, that makes no sense. I said, it does make sense because when I'm old and I hover around with a headset on the sideline, you know, these are the kids that's going to be running the world. Right. You know, and as a coach, you know, they're going to remember you as a coach. They're going to remember Absolutely. what you taught them. They're going to remember, they're going to remember everything. So, I, I, that's why I said it. And I, I give them that because Rec Ball here, they play each other. So Edenton plays Elizabeth City and so forth. Whereas mm-hmm. when I play, I play Pop Warner, which is like mm-hmm. what she was explaining, weight limits. Right. I played with tons of guys who were superstars. I mean, mm-hmm. the Reggie Bush of the football field, got to high school, barely made the team. Yep. But just – just because, and I and I give the example I give them is because Rec Ball and Pop Warner, those are too, they're too easy to manipulate. You know, I can go, you can go get five good players from Fayetteville. I can go get five from here, five from there, and put them all on one team. Now we have a superstar team. So now ain't nobody really going to touch us. Whereas mm-hmm. you break this superstar team up and you put them on a level playing field, now they look average or below average. Right. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Um, so we're going to jump into a little bit of film that I, I believe you have for us, Coach. So oh, yeah. so if you want to go ahead and lead us into it before you show it, I mean, more than welcome to, or if you want to just go ahead oh, and search yeah. I, mean, I, I, I have me a, a couple other points I wanted to share with somebody who okay. I feel like would take us into it. Um. Before you get behind, the, you know, the sort of fancy stuff and you see the guys on Sunday, I know the running joke with Andy Reid is that his call sheets looks like the menu from the Waffle House. You know, before <laughs> you get into stuff like that, man, I I would give a person the, the advice of be creative. Yeah. And when I say be creative, there are I have thousands of playbooks on my iPad, whatever. There are plenty of in a box systems that are out there you can go get it it has everything there for you install all of that and there's nothing wrong with that in my book and if that's the way you want to go do it but when i say be creative and i was headed down that road but i found myself when i'm rehearsing it to teach it i found that my heart wasn't really in it like it was there but the passion for the but it wasn't in it because i felt like it wasn't mine you know, this right, is somebody right. else's words that I'm going to teach somebody else. Like I said, again, there's nothing wrong with it. But for me, I felt more into it and it made me more proud to watch something that I put together versus yeah. something that 20 other coaches down the street are running because mm-hmm. it's an, a, 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 what I call an in-the-box offense. Um, I have Clemson playbooks. I have Alabama playbooks. I have... Mm-hmm. All of that good stuff, you know, and like I said, it's good to have that stuff. But again, be creative. Yeah. And on top of that, man, you know, don't just sit around and say, "Oh, I'm gonna be an air raid guy." <laughs> Why? Why are you gonna be an air raid guy? Do you even know what the air raid is? Learn systems. Go mm-hmm. out and learn. Like, okay, I learn. I know the air raid, so let me learn to run and shoot. Let me learn the wings. Learn some systems. Oh, network, network around. There are plenty of Facebook groups like, you know, this one where I met you guys at and all of that with plenty of stuff to where that you can learn systems that you can implement. But mm-hmm. most importantly, like uh, me and Matt have talked about it. You've heard Matt say over and over again, make it fun. Absolutely. That is that is, that is the one thing that you can do is make it fun because yeah. you got to remember, kids don't go outside and play throw up tackle anymore. They play mm-hmm. Madden. They play yep. whatever's on TV, and then they see football. You know, it's Odell Beckham making a one-handed catch. It's Dalvin Cook juking out a whole defense and running down the sideline. It's mm-hmm. all of this miraculous stuff. Well, they're going to want to emulate this. They're not going to mm-hmm. want to stand around because you're giving it to your six-foot-two kid that hit a growth spurt early five, 500 times a game, and they're just, well, what am I going to do? And you get mad because they're not doing it. They're, they're bored. Right. You know, yep. they're, they're bored. And, and essentially when making plays, 
don't be that guy like me, man. Don't be the every play guy. And the every play guy is, oh, man, you know what? I like that. Let me add that to the play. But we're going to run that on Monday. I was there, too. I was there, too. Actually. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'll talk about it after you hit me. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I would. Uh, oh man, you know what? That, you know, you see, you see the Chiefs on Sunday, reverse, flip it back to him, and give it to him. And man, don't be that guy. Find see, what I, you like. I made that mistake. You know, I've been, like you're talking about when I first started taking over, started calling plays. This is what I had watching football games. <laughs> it's like, hey, I like that play. Let me rewind. Exactly. I can put that in. I can put that in on Monday. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. And I made that same mistake myself. So yeah, I, I, I'm going to echo what you just said. And don't be that guy. Absolutely. Don't be that guy where you say, you know what? I saw that on, on Sunday. You know, I, we can we can run that play. We can do that. And I've heard I've heard Coach Mackey say the same thing. He he's done, you know, don't do that, you know. And I, I, I kind of live under the rule of uh or the uh the saying of what Coach Mackey said, simplify, simplify, simplify. And and I and I've lived by that because I was that guy when I first started coaching. I had ninety two plays. Ninety two <laughs> plays. <laughs> and I, I never, you know, I, and I look back at it going back my first year of coaching. I, I probably didn't run half of those, but I, I was, I was installing stuff every single week, just installing. Well, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. We can do that. And I'm like, you don't do that. You know, find the plays, you know, find, find your, your, why, why are you running that offense? Make it yours. Why are you running that system? And then instead of doing a, a, a bunch of things, average, do a few things. Great. Do a few things I'm great. Glad you brought up, I'm glad you brought up practice and install because that was kind of my next thing to hit on. Okay, um, go for it. You know, the first question you got to ask, once, once you've touched on all the other things, the first question you got to ask yourself, how much time do I have? You yeah. know, that ties into don't be that guy. If you're that guy, mm -hmm. like you said, with 92 plays, do you <laughs> really feel like you have the time to install? 90? You don't, you're not college. You don't have spring ball. Then the summer, mm -hmm. then the you know pretty much all of the fought the summer. You know mm -hmm. how much time do you have? You know right. how difficult is it? Again, you're dealing with seventh and eighth grade. Can give them Y buck, waggle Z post. That they're not going to get that. That's mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. You know how how difficult for me. First thing that I came up with, I essentially wanted to keep the offense to look the same. So we started. Mm -hmm. My first thing I came up with was a split back. Twins right, single receiver left. Every single play, the outside receiver was going to look like he's doing a screen, right running back going to do a bubble, and the slot was going to block. And that was every single play. And, yeah, we'll get to that in a second, but that ain't last long. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, after you ask yourself how much time you have, man, ask yourself, how am I going to teach this? You know, yeah. that's mm -hmm. that's one of the especially if you're a player, if you're a formal player, you got to turn the teacher, you know, mm -hmm. and turning it from player to teacher is not an easy task because you're right. going to get it. And everybody else around you who are formal players are going to get it. But it's not as if you get it, it's if they get it. Right. You know, that was one issue we had during the summer for myself is our first install day on the board. Um. I explained everything at once. I ain't break it down. I didn't say you knew it. And they were scratching their heads like, coach, I got to know all of that. So the following day, I was like, all right, you know what? No. Lyman, you need to know this. Running backs, mm -hmm. you need to know that. And it was like a light click. And it was like, okay, cool. Now I understand. Yeah. On top of just plays, man, the one thing that and I'm going to include that this year, last season, I was so caught up on play knowledge and whether my guys were going to know what to do that we didn't implement this, but make sure you have a fundamental development period. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. It, it doesn't matter. You can run a play a thousand times. If you're play, if you can run verticals all day. If your, your guy doesn't know how to do it and then he's just not going to know how to do it, you know, and that's the issue we ran into last year. Again, tying it to the point of, like I said, don't be that guy. Practice mm -hmm. what you're going to run. You know, mm -hmm. make sure your make sure your players get it. In the film that I got, I have a play that ends up, you know, in the end being a touchdown. But the first time it was busted because our star player didn't know what to do. Right. You no. Know? Well, I think uh, when it comes to practice, and I mean to cut you off there, for coach, but when it comes to practice, I'm a big advocate of, you know, you could, you I mean, don't be the coach that 
just gets in team and runs team the entire plan, you know, break them up into their, their position level because they need to understand, you know, why am I doing this? And the receivers need to know why they're doing this on this certain play. The running back needs to know, why am I doing this? Or, you know, the lineman, why am I blocking this way? They need to understand why, if you're just getting them in team and just running play after play after play, and they don't understand why they're doing this, then it's not necessarily going to be successful. So, um, you know, implementing those kind of things in practice, I completely agree with you. And uh, us as coaches, uh, we are massive time crunchers in trying to map all that in. So it, it's, it's real important to go into practice with a plan of how you're going to install it. Don't, don't try and just install too much all at once, you know, keep it in, in small little baby steps. And, but then just make sure that the players understand why am I doing this? Why am I doing this particular thing at this particular point in, the, in this play? And then once they start understanding the why, then you, all of a sudden you, you in that team session, you will see it just pay off that much more because now they understand the why. So now the play gets faster. And, you, and I don't know about you, but like when we first started installing stuff and we started running it, it's real slow. But then as it gets, as the season goes on, all of a sudden the reps increase, the reps increase and then they're faster and we're hitting on all cylinders and it just, it, it's, it's crisp and we're, and we're doing it right the way we're supposed to because they understand why they're doing it. And, you know, so I completely agree with you that, you know, implementing those type of things in practice is vital. It's, it's absolutely important. So now, you know, we we'll turn the page so we can get closer to the whatever what we came <laughs> here for, the film. Um, this is game. These are kind of points that I would give on game day. First thing, back to the very first thing I said, don't panic. You know, mm-hmm. now it's game day. It's, it's not practice. It's not a scrimmage. Now – all eyes on you, but don't panic and stay calm, you know, because your players are going to react how you react. If you sit over here, you're a nervous wreck, then <laughs> they're going to be a nervous wreck, especially right. if you got a lot of guys that ain't never played football before. You know, following with that, control your emotions. Me, uh, all year long, I wanted to drop kick all our referees just because <laughs> Um, they magically seen everything we did, but nothing that the other teams did. And I right. never understood that all year. But part of controlling your emotions, man, you can't – you got to stay under control and just know you can control what you can control and mm-hmm. what you can't, you can't. Yeah. Um, with your play calling, sequence your play calling. Don't just run it to run it. I made this mistake so many times throughout the year. You know, it – just to give an example, in our game, the only game we lost, first play of offensive drive, one play touchdown. Boom. One play passing touchdown. We got all the momentum. We cooking, make a defensive stop. We come back. We have been working on this trick play all week. I'm feeling myself. You know what? Go ahead and run it. As soon as and which this falls into my next point of trust your gut. As soon as I call this play. And they started the cadence. My gut went, why did you guys call this? Why did you not just stick with your original play call? Why did you call this? Kid you not, as soon as the play happens, we throw an interception. They come back, throw a long bomb on a vertical route, and end up scoring. And now we're back in back and forth game. So sequence your play caller, man. Don't just call it just to call it. Let it be. Something, all right, if I'm going to run this, why am I running this? Exactly. You know, I ran this to give them a show because I know later I'm going to run this or later or I'm going to run this after that or something. Just let it be a reason that, you, that you're calling it. Um, keep up with your down and distance. Mm-hmm. I know that, that sounds cliche and it's like, well, that's, that's a given, but you'll be surprised how you'll forget, oh, man, it's, it's third and two. And I'm running this play. Well, wait, why did I run that? We only need two yards for a first down. Mm-hmm. No, you just so caught in the game. You ain't really paying no attention. And on top of that, keep up with your time. All right, right. know where you know where you at and know what, how the clock is running. If you got a running clock, you don't have timeouts. You don't, and you need to score. You don't got time to be running up the middle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that sounds again, that sounds cliche. Um, but don't waste timeouts. I don't know how, you know, it works for other coaches, but how we had it was since it was two of us, I had a timeout, he had a timeout, and we had that one in the middle. But we ain't wasting timeouts for anything. 
Mm. You know, like, and no. that philosophy has saved us in it at the end of a game because we had all three and the other team had none. So yeah. when I say don't waste them, hey, man, sometime better just take that penalty. And that, that's just me. And that, mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's your own personal preference. That's how you want to do it. But just for me, I'm not calling the timeout for no five yard penalty. Just just eat the five because you never know when that timeout is going to be needed later on. Mm hmm. And last, before I get to my final points, man, let me get to the um, everything else. Remember that the easiest place to coach from is in the stands or on the couch. And I say that because, like I said, it's game day. Everything is ripped off at this point. There are going to be thousands of people, hundreds of people behind you that feel like, why did you do that? Why did you do this? You don't owe any of them an explanation. All right. Mm-hmm. If, yeah, if they were so great at it, I'm pretty sure they would be in your spot. And there's no disrespect to anybody. But again, the easiest place to coach from is from the stands. Yeah, absolutely, huh? I couldn't agree more with that one because I mean, I, you know, and me personally, I when I when I get on the sidelines, I am I'm drowning them out. I'm doing my best, you know. And I hear nasty things said to me, you know, said to my players. I uh, said to my other coaches, but it's it's all about just trying out because if you let that get into your head, then that's going to affect your decision making later on in the game. So I completely agree with you right there. And finally, uh, man, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh well, no, hey, go man. ahead, go ahead. It's all right. Finally, man, this, this is the last few couple points I got, man. It's just stuff that I found along the way, just to help you be, you know, that that coach that people like, you know. I mean, it ain't about being a people's person, but it's all, to me, on top of coaching football, it's about being morally, okay, you know, morally straight with stuff too, you know. So let's say your season is over or better yet, not even over. You, you for My first game was horrible. We won 13 nothing. I had zero to do with winning that game. Our star player won that game himself. Mm-hmm. I scrapped every play we ran that, that, that – I literally scrapped everything. So my advice would be stay the course. Yep. Why yep. I say that? My players were upset with me. Coach, why are you getting rid of everything? We got it. Hey, man, just trust me. I, I ain't even know if I could trust myself at that point, but I'm just sitting here like, hey, man, just trust me. But my players mm-hmm. were furious. Right. Um, it ended up working out for the best. But, hey, man, had I stayed the course, would it have changed differently? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But stay the course. Don't Again, don't panic. Nope. Next one, take yourself out the game, man. And I, I literally had to learn this the hard way, especially once we started hitting, because I'm more, I was more of a physical player. Mm-hmm. So, what I mean by take yourself out of the game, you can't get upset with a kid because he didn't make a play you felt like you could have made. He didn't hit somebody as hard as you thought, you know, you would have hit him or whatever. It just you got to look at it from every player is different, you know. Take yourself out and put yourself in their shoes. If you got a, a, a five foot two kid that barely weighs ninety pounds wet, he's not gonna run into no big kid that's that didn't hit a growth spur already and look like almost like my Alabama recruit at his age. You know he's not gonna do that. Mm-hmm. So you gotta take yourself out the game, man. And you heard me say it earlier, man. Don't get so caught up in winning. You know. Mm-hmm. Winning is great, but don't get so caught up in it to where you just, you know, you throwing away everything for these kids. You know, like in like that same game, we weren't 13 and nothing. We had a kid, man, the I star player, and I had to sit him down for the entire second half because they were purposely trying to hurt him. But I gave him the why. You know, you got a future in football, man. I'm not going to ruin your future just for me to win a middle school football game, man. So you're going to sit down. So that's what I mean by don't get so caught up in winning. And finally, man, remember these are not your memories. These are the memories for these kids that they're going to be the same way we can sit up here and talk about all the war stories from the battlefield of playing football. This is their chance to do that. You know, just keep that in mind. These are their memories, not yours. I mean, granted, they're yours, but when I say that, just 
your coaching career is probably going to go a lot longer than these guys playing. Most of these guys are going to end up making it to high school. And by statistics, that's it. Sorry, I got disconnected there for a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, but you just try to remember that these that the memories that you're that you're given are more important for them than you because at least to me, your coaching career is gonna go a lot further than them playing. Right. Well, that, that's great advice. I mean, and I completely agree. I mean, you know, you are a role model, mentor first, coach second. You you are trying to develop young men. Um, and not, you know, all-star football players in middle school. You're, you're preparing for the next level, yes, but you are trying to um, uh, develop young men to be successful because, again, uh, maybe like in your area, you know, if some of the kids in my area, you know, if they didn't have football or didn't have sports, they're out on the streets doing things they shouldn't be doing. So football is a little bit more of an escape, and it's, a, you know, a relief to uh, – to keep them out of some trouble and bad decisions that they might be making. So it's important for us as coaches to not only help them there on the football field, but then also on top of that, teach them how to be successful later on. Because like you're, you're right. Majority of those kids that we're coaching on that field are probably not going to go on to play collegiate football or, or, you know, or even in the pros, you know, that, that middle school year might be the last time they ever even play football. So it's important that we develop those young men as, as people first so that's great advice that uh, that you can offer right there. I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, before we do hop into the film, though, what kind of uh, offense do do you uh, run at your school? Well, I, I, to, it was supposed to be a marriage between kind of the air raid and the triple option, but mm -hmm. passing kind of got looked over this year because, like I said, I was stumbling over myself. So. Right. We run a lot of stuff based off the option. Um, mm -hmm. We have plays that you're going to see that it looks like it's the option, but it ends up being a tall sweep. Um, we had plays that we ran out of our tight, form, tight slots formation that would start off a jet sweep but end up becoming an option play. Um, mm -hmm. I don't believe I have that as film, but just a lot of things based off of the triple option out of the shotgun. Okay. Um, Look to more so this season uh, to add more passing concepts, specifically stuff from the array like mesh mm -hmm. and corner and things like that. But I, I felt like we did pretty good with it. We averaged what 29 points a game this year with it. That's good. Um, yeah. we ended up finishing six and one. And Cole, I'm only gonna say it just because it's politically correct, and it's probably the last <laughs> time you're gonna hear me say it. We were Cole Conference champions. Even though there's, I, we ain't gonna get into it, but we're co conference <laughs> champions. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, you're you're kind of in the same boat I am. It's kind of you know your uh, your offense has kind of evolved a little bit, and it's and it's going to continue to evolve, and that's fine because you're you're trying to find that version that that fits you and fits your style the best. So uh, that's good coaching. I mean, like I told you uh, before we went on. I might have to get up with you later on because I've been wanting to dabble in with the option a little bit. So I might be hitting up you later on to uh, to uh, kind of coach me and how to how to teach the option play a little bit because I'm, that's something I'm definitely well, interested in learning. But this film that, that I have is actually from a game we won 36 to six, and the option pretty much killed them. Man, they they yeah. had no no nothing for it but that, that's i don't believe there are any option shots in this okay. i believe there's one that from that has the tall sweep what i was talking about but right i believe that's it well let's go ahead let's get into it then all right you got it yep all right well I was saying right here on the sideline, you can see myself with the old McDonald hat on and my <laughs> head coach beside me. But a lot of people would call this a wasted drive, which I don't. Because um, mm -hmm. in my mind, my mindset for this entire drive was to attack this short side of the field. 
and why would be when you, later you'll see the touchdown. But it was I, keep in mind that I'm playing seven and eighth grade, eighth grader. They're not gonna register. But wait a minute, they keep coming to the right. They must be have something come back to the left. You know, right? That ain't gonna register. They're just gonna follow the ball. So we clear. Mm-hmm. They can play. We come in here. This is a horrible play call. You know, you're going to see our star guy right there. He goes up in there and gets his helmet snatched off. And which you can see is talented. If he'd been able to keep going, I'm pretty sure he'd have been, he'd have been gone. But yeah. it was a stupid play call. And I, and I can admit that. So we come back here and we're going to run a tunnel screen to the right side. Now, again, keep in mind, like I said, my whole thought process is to get them committed to keep coming to the right make everything mm-hmm. look like it's coming to the right, right each time so you were all about, <clears throat> excuse me you were all about trying to set up that set up another play too we run the screen yeah that i don't know wrong Again, you can see the head coach at the bottom. You, know I mean? you haven't seen him come screaming in my ear yet, but he's going to start, you know, come get him and say, hey, man, you know, what about the other side? So from right. here, come back, and we do the same play again. Don't get the same success, but come back, and we do the same play again. Mm-hmm. Excuse all the people that's walking around. And we get an incomplete pass. So from there, you know, to come back and the play that I told you about the 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 um the pitch that looks like an option, I'm about to actually run that on this play. We get a pretty good gain out of it. Now, did you tell your uh, your head coach, hey, I'm trying to set set certain things up, or? Uh... Or does he just kind of just let you kind of just call what you want and then he kind of makes um, sort of some uh, suggestions as to, hey, I think you should be oh, one no, of those. Everything, every, everything for me was free reign. Okay. Uh, everything was free range. I get to get to run it. I run, you know, pretty much what I want to. I'm not remember. I believe we get a penalty here for what I don't remember. Trying to skip it along, get all the parts out of here, and sit here and watch people walk around. Okay, yeah, we get an all-size penalty. Now we finna run the pitch play. That receiver on the other side, he should be way away from the line of scrimmage, all the way up, wide it out. Mm-hmm. But you see our quarterback take it, and he's gonna. Well, we spent a time out. I see your coach getting your ear a little bit there. He said that's what it looked like. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here, you know, he's going to – I like his option. He's going to pitch it to him. And notice that they couldn't really beat us around the edge. Good green. But now a play that was supposed to happen. This next play was supposed to be similar to that. It was going to make – it look like like this option from a split back formation, and is this it? It's gonna look. It's gonna be out of a two back formation split back. Where you send a guy in the motion mm-hmm. into the backfield, and the objective is to get everybody going to the right. And mm-hmm. throw it back on a screen to number one. And you'll see number right. 30 here uh, go into motion into back. Fake it to him. Now he ain't there. The busted play. Now we got to take a sack. Mm-hmm. So we come back and we're going to run verticals. And you're going to see the ball get thrown to number seven and slot which he's gonna get pushed down and we all thought it should have been pass interference but so now at this point at this point in the drive coach right that, that what what down is what down is that right there push.
That was we didn't punt the ball, so that was that was literally that just was, trying to pick up first down. Okay, that was fourth down. And that's that clip. So this clip here, I know we're on. Uh, excuse me. Clip. I do this a lot with my kids. This guy. Not Number seven, this is us on defense. Make a great play for us. Why? Mm -hmm. Now, everything, like I said, I want to get every, everything coming to the right to set up mm -hmm. everything else that's going the other way because you're playing seven and eighth graders and they're not going to register. So you're going to initially mm -hmm. see me signal in the play that was a busted play. Um, that we had to take a sack on, but you're going to see me change the play in the middle of that, which it's gonna, it, it turns out being a good play. And most people will say, oh, well, that was a dumb call. But you'll see after that why I made this call. So we're going to line back up in our split back formation. He's going to motion the guy to the back. And you see me right there changing the play. That's Atlanta signal, Atlanta. Um, yep, Atlanta yep. 8, which is a pitch play for us. Fake it to him, come back. There's the pitch. And again, it wasn't the gang yards, but he does a good job running. Referee decided to get tackled too. <laughs> so on this next play, you're going to see why all of that came into play. Now, keep in mind, like I said, my head coach is in my ear at this point. I keep making that a, a note because, you know, as a new coordinator, I'm pretty sure you're going to have your head coach in your ear a lot when you're when you're doing something. And especially if he doesn't know, as soon as he comes out to me and says something about the wide side of the field, my literal words was, I got it. And now you're going to see what my mindset was. So we're going to motion him. You're going to fake it, fake the pitch, throw it back, touchdown. Because everybody was flowing to the right, and their yep. team ain't fast enough to catch them. And see, and see that that that's part of of the why when you're when you're when you're play calling because you know some some people even even the people in the stands they're they're saying well, why are you doing this why 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 aren't you throwing the ball why aren't you running the ball and it's it's about you know well as a coach we 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 notice certain tendencies that the defense is doing and we want to we want to try and take advantage of them. but first. We have to get them thinking something else, and especially like you said with seventh and eighth graders, you get them thinking one thing, and then all of a sudden hit them with another. That sets up that sets up totally. You know, that gives you a a bunch of different options later on in the game, especially if it's a close game, because now you say, okay, I show up in this formation, and I ran two different things out of this. Which one am I going to do now? And you you've got the defense thinking, and I'm a firm believer if once you have a defense thinking, especially in middle school, you've already won. Because if you can get them thinking and not thinking about their assignments, because they, I mean, we all know typical defense to be a great defense, every all eleven guys need to do their job. But if they're thinking, if they're thinking about something else already, what the offense is going to be doing, you've already won the battle there. So, so setting and certain play plays right up like there that was exactly that play right there, man. It was. That that play, it was it was beautiful, man. Cause I was I was sitting there biting my nails, like, man, Lord, please let this work. Cause if this don't work, <laughs> now, I'm gonna look like a, I'm gonna look horrible. For those who want to know, we actually do win that game, thirty six to six, and yeah, offensively, we were we were man unstoppable. And when mm -hmm. I say unstoppable, it's just with that same philosophy, the thing that I was saying, you know, setting it up. All right, we're gonna keep coming this mm -hmm. way, coming this way. Then boom, we're back this way. Oh man, he's gone. We because yep. we've all committed to this side, and now we got to take bad angles. And you're probably not going to be fast enough to catch our guy. So, mm -hmm. man, we we hit that all night, man, and we were we were relentless, man. And I was I was happy because my scrap it plan worked. <laughs> and for one game, I didn't look like a huge dummy. And I was I was <laughs> man, I was so proud of myself, man. I got that, and that's that's why I gave that that advice, man. On be creative and create your own, man. Because if you if you just took it out of a out of the box offense, man, you know, 
you ain't gonna have that proud moment once it happened on the field. Like, you know what? I sat down and I did that. You know. Well, I think that was a good example of what you said earlier about stay the course because you were staying the course with, oh, I'm gonna run to the right. I'm gonna run to the right. I'm gonna run to the right and get them thinking and everything's going to the right. And then all of a sudden you hit them with the left and you stay the course with that. Even though some of the plays didn't work, especially some of the ones you know you 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 took a took a loss for. But you still set something up, and then all of a sudden you had that major success because you stayed the course. Said, you know what, this is my strategy. This is what I'm going to do because I'm going to set something up later on down the road that I know is going to work. So I mean, clear cut example right there of, of of great coaching and great, you know, essentially being being a play caller is like being a strategy a, a strategist, and you you are trying to pick and choose your, your battles as far as where the defense is weak and where you think you can take advantage of. So, I mean, I thought you did a great job there and that that's a great clip to show an example of just how as a play caller, you are just sitting there setting something up and because of what you see and because of your, your game plan or what you, the mindset you had going into the game. So that's a great example of, uh, of uh, trying just to be a good strategist and, like you said, stay the course and make sure that, it, you know, I keep doing what I'm doing and eventually it's going to work. So that's, I, I appreciate you showing man, that. It's, it's when, 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 like, you know, for anybody that's watching, man, you know, you may not be as, uh, you may be at a school where the talent pool may not have been as big as mine or whatever else, man, mm -hmm. on the, on the upside, man, don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Like, like he's been saying and repeating over and over again, man, stay the course. You'll find your breakthrough somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. don't overload. Don't go back and watch thousands of Clemson games like me and be like, oh, you know what? We're <laughs> going to run that hole. We're going to do that. You know, just stay your course, man, and, and do what you should do. You know, I, I lucked mm -hmm. up and had that happen for me. And, you know, after, after this season, I've been watching film like a hawk and taking mm -hmm. out stuff that didn't work and implement like that play, that play staying. All in plays you saw, those are staying <laughs> as far right. as run wise. No, it was um, a good sequence. Um, that play, sequence. man, it, that, that was a play that I really wish I went back to a lot, but it was kind of one of those, play, one of those, again, things that I touched on, don't be that guy. Again, I was that guy, and that play got lost in the playbook because I, has so much other stuff so mm -hmm. everything that I'm, that I'm i'm applying man i can sit here and give you an example for myself so if you're somebody out there that watch thousands of coach mackie videos thousands of you know matt lasica videos or coach ross or thousands <laughs> anything man and you're still not understanding man just really get, get out there and and take what you learned from that first season man because just take mm -hmm. the first season as trial and error. That's yep. that's essentially what it's going to be. And once it's over, take what worked and what didn't work and figure out why. Don't just scrap right. what didn't work. Why didn't this work? Did I yeah. not teach it good enough? Was it? Did we not have the players? Okay. Well, why did this work? Mm -hmm. uh, did I teach mm -hmm. this? Did I teach this any different than this? Like, and come to a common ground. Did I need, did I use this stuff? No, I didn't use this stuff at all. So mm -hmm. especially now with COVID, so your your time is going to be cut. Um, that stuff can absolutely. go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my my advice just to touch, you know, just to you know continue what you were just talking about there is, find, especially especially early in your season, find out what you do well, find out what you do well, and continue that um, because, like I told you before. When I first started coaching, I had 92 plays, 92 plays. Now in our base offense that we run, uh, we have 11 base plays, just 11. And then we have a little packages here and there that we sprinkle in, but 11 base plays that we just work over and over and over again. And those are the few things that we do well. And it shows because, again, I tell my boys, we're, we, we may not be the fastest, strongest team out there, but – what we are going to do is we are going to out execute every team. So we are working those things in practice again, like we talked about earlier, not, not doing a bunch of things average, but doing a few things great. And you will, you will see how the success happens. So is there uh, do you have anything else for us coach? Or was that, is that, uh, that that's what oh, you wanted to show us tonight? Man. 
And I, that was that's the clip that I bought because that was kind okay. of the turning point for me um, as far as play calling. Um, I learned a lot um, from in season and last little bit I can give somebody, man, get out here and network, man. Network yeah. as much as possible. And when I say network, I mean network your butt off. You know, mm-hmm. talk to as many people that have talked to you because you're going to learn a lot. Yeah. I've learned a lot in my short period of time. When I thought I knew football, I've learned stuff that I didn't. <laughs> and yep. just just network and, and don't stop. Uh, don't yeah. don't stop. Uh, don't stop learning. Don't stop asking questions. Absolutely. Um, don't just and outside of your season, man, go support your boys. You know, mm-hmm. go support them while they playing other sports. Go see a baseball game or basketball game. You no, know, go, go, go. Go support them and keep up with them. You know, I mm-hmm. I talk to my boys, even the ones that ain't coming back. I talk to them a lot. Um, yep. I give them I give them life stuff. Uh, one thing my boys like they like that I use um, real life scenarios. So, mm-hmm. man, that was something that I said earlier. You know, be real with be you know break the ice early. You know, late in your yep. career, if you're five nine, one eighty five, and you're playing middle linebacker, you know, and you want to go to Bama, well. Log on to Bama's website and tell me where you see a 5'9", 185 linebacker at. <laughs> yeah. You know, just, off, just little stuff like that, man. It's stuff that, that, that really helped me gain my boys to trust in me because I'm I'm upfront with you. Like, I'm not telling you you can't play for Bama, but I want you to be realistic. Be, mm-hmm. be, be firm in what it is. Like, I don't mean to keep rambling on, man, but it's just so no, much. I, no I I want to be able to help somebody in my spot, man, and and because right. it, it was a lot for me, man. But yeah. one thing I t- I challenged some of my guys who were going to high school to do, hey man, go get a notebook, get a notebook, and between three to five schools, start from Division One all the way down to JUCO, and pick three to five schools in each one of them that you would like to attend. Write it in pencil because it's gonna change over the years, and. Mm-hmm. Go look at their rosters for whatever sport you want to play. Look at what their rosters are. But most importantly, go look at what their requirements are for you to get there. Because that's right. something that, that that's not being pushed to you is that I don't care if you can shoot. If you make 100 threes out of 100 threes, if you ain't got at least a 4.0, I don't believe Duke coming and knocking your door because Duke's a medical school. Yep. And see that that as a so, teacher, as a te- as a teacher in my school, I'm right there with you. I tell them, um, <clears throat> you know, you don't, without the classroom, you don't get the football field or the basketball court or the baseball diamond or whatever it might be. Um, because even now, like now nowadays in uh, this virtual learning, you know, some of the uh, the grades are not what they should be. So I've been even telling my boys now, get your grades right. Otherwise, you know, come February when football does start up, you know, you're not going to be there because you need the classroom first. So. Um, you're absolutely right there. And going back to the other point you made about networking, you know, I couldn't agree more because the, the community that we that we've developed here, you know, the, the middle school air raid community, the, all the all the Facebook groups and everything. Um, I can't tell you how much I learned from Coach Lasker and Coach Mackey and 92 Mesh Group and Coach Salas. And they all and I've been you know talking to all of them. So like you said, don't be afraid to ask questions because there are no stupid questions stupid questions when it comes to being a brand new coach, not knowing what to do or trying something new um, because, you know, you're, you're going to get the answers you're looking for because everyone now, everyone in these communities are here willing to help. That's why those, that's why those communities here. That's why those groups are here. So, and, and I appreciate you coming on here and sharing your story like you did, because I mean, this, this is, this is all meant to help coaches in your position that are just like you, just like me when I was, when I was a younger coach, and uh, anyone that is up and coming that wants to come into uh, join the uh, the football coaching ring. So um, we are a little over an hour into it. So, Coach, I appreciate you coming on here and sharing your story. Um, and I hope to have you on again, especially, you know, we're going to try and continue this series to get some other coaches on here. But I'd love to have you back on to uh, to talk more football, especially maybe maybe even have an episode about the option. You see, you, see, you can do the teaching. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, any 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 time, man. I can get up here to help, man. I'm willing to. Um, oh, absolutely. Anybody in the future see this, you know, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, 
I guess you can pay my email into the, the comment section. Or you can find me on Facebook, Randy Baskin. Or you, you, you yeah, can go ahead and join the group. You, yeah. Join uh, the Facebook group. The Facebook group is where you, uh, I think it's what, Middle School Air Raid? Yep. Middle School Air Raid on, uh, I think that's on what Facebook. Yep. Mm-hmm. Join the group, man. Join the group. It's a lot of great coaches in there, man, that's going to teach you. If you're thinking about running the Air Raid, man, just because I've been there from when I seen Matt started to now, hey, man, go to, I think it's what, Air Raid Warden? Go watch mm-hmm. his series, man. It's great yep. content. I don't, don't believe it's, it costs at this point. Um, nope. Get up there, man. And Hey, man, don't ever hesitate to, to contact me if you have any questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, go ahead and uh, you can actually type your uh, your information into the into the, the comments if you, if you, if you want. That's uh, so what I click the comment section. Let's see. Didn't show up yet. Try it now. See if that works. But yeah, man, this this has been it's been a lot more fun. I can't lie to you. It's kind of had me nervous too, and get up here. And no, sound like sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on, Coach, and. Uh, Definitely like to have you on again here sometimes here in the near future, especially uh, as you and I seasons get uh, get closer to starting here. So I appreciate, Coach. You got any uh, any last words before we sign off for tonight? Man, to those who have been playing already, I'm kind of jealous, but I hope your oh, season yes. turns out pretty well. Yeah. Those yeah. of you that are starting out in February, um, I wish you the best of luck to anybody that's a player that's watching them. And I hope every, I hope all your hope, wishing dreams come true. And if you're going to watch this and you're going to play me this season, be aware. <laughs> all right, coach. I appreciate you coming on tonight and I will uh, be talking to you soon and uh, I'll take care until then. All right. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right.